YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. Looking at some old books. On the left we see the Armageddon game. Copyright 1977. In the middle we have Death Freak 1979. On the right we have Jaeger 1985. The Armageddon game is a Cold War vintage crime thriller spy action drama which doesn't actually tell you where to get a hold of your plutonium but assuming you can organize a source of plutonium that'll give you the recipe and explain to you how to mix it up the death freak it's another cold war crime thriller spy versus spy style of a novel but it will tell you how to convert vaseline into stable when wet, unstable, self-detonating when dry, homemade landmines. It'll tell you how to make cyanide gas and nerve poison and how to make the delivery mechanisms out of fairly common or garden variety items. And then we have Jaeger, the autobiography suitably ghost written of the first person to ever fly in a controlled fashion, deliberately faster than the speed of sound in the rocket-powered Bell X-1 research vehicle in 1947, when he was working for the United States Army Air Corps because the Americans didn't actually have an independent air force back when he was breaking the speed of sound for the first time. So, why is his ghost-written autobiography in company with Death Freak and Armageddon Game? Well, it's because the Armageddon game tells you how to build a plutonium bomb if you want to and you care enough to put enough resources into it. Death Freak tells you how to make several completely deadly things and use them if you want to. They both clearly advocate for terrorism by uh, explaining to people how to make deadly devices. Chuck Yeager, what's he doing there? Well, you see... <clears throat> Before he was a test pilot, he was a fighter pilot, and when he was a fighter pilot, he was actually kind of famous because he was the first American fighter pilot to have been shot down, and then to have escaped being captured, and to have evaded and made his own way back from occupied France all the way back to England, and other people had done that before, but he was the first one who successfully argued that he should be allowed to get back in his aeroplane and go out there and continue to fight. So he finished his combat tour after escaping and evading, after being shot down. So that means there was a period in time when he was running around on the ground in France, and when he was running around on the ground in France, he says he was a bomb maker to a terrorist gang and it was good fun and interesting work. He actually says that in about a 1989 reprint edition of the book. In the later edition, the ghost writer appears to have wanted to spice up the dialogue, so it's, you know, there I was, bomb maker to a terrorist gang. It was good fun and interesting work. Now we'll have a look at what it says in this earlier version of the book. In the later version, with more padding, it appears on about page 60. Here it appears on page 45. Okay, whoopsie. There we go. The drop operation takes less than five minutes. An hour later, we are crowded inside a barn working by lanterns. As the canister is opened, we separate the contents. Sten guns, .38 Lama pistols, boxes of ammunition, packages of counterfeit franc notes, bread and meat ration stamps, bundles of plastic explosives, and all kinds of fuses and timing devices. I tell Robert, quote, I can help you with this stuff, unquote. As a kid, I helped Dad shoot gas wells with plastic explosives. To me, sears and fuses are a piece of cake. There are printed instructions in English attached to the fuse packages, but first the weapons caches have to be hidden in various haystacks and root cellars around the countryside. I'm put in charge of the explosive fuse devices. I take them back with me to camp and show Robert how to set them up for different timings. Two, four, six, or eight hours. And that will be my assignment for as long as I'm with these guys. Marquee Fuse Man. When they see I know what I'm doing, 
I'm put in charge of cutting up cords of plastic and attaching them to fuses. A terrorist bomb maker. The work is fun and interesting. A terrorist bomb maker. The work is fun and interesting. It's very hard to see that as not being advocating in favour of terrorism. He says he was making bombs with a terrorist gang. It was good fun and interesting work. And when he said that, it was a feather in his cap and he was a hero. And then after the September 11, 2001 events in America involving some airplanes and some buildings and some Saudi Arabians and some Jordanians and I think a Portuguese, but no Afghans. Uh, after that, all of a sudden, the world decided to have a war on terrorism. Whereas terrorism or asymmetric warfare has got a really long history and the word itself goes back to Joseph Goebbels describing the British Air Force crews who were firebombing German citizens and cities as being terror flegeran, terror flyers. Pretty much anybody who uses a threat of force to compel somebody else to submit is indulging in terrorism, you know. I will induce your terror of what I will do to you if you do not comply. That's what terrorism is. But anyway, there's Chuck Yeager's autobiography. He's advocating for terrorism and the Australian government suddenly announced that it was going to be illegal to display or offer for sale any publication which advocates for terrorism. And I thought, well, what are they going to do? Are they going to go around and raid everybody's libraries and bookshops? Are they going to take away all the stuff that was printed and sold during the Cold War? And what about Chuck Yeager himself? Does this mean that he's a banned terrorist author in Australia because his book advocates terrorism? So I wrote to some of my politicians. So in uh, 2007, when there had been a bit of a spate of Australian high school science laboratories suddenly exploding in the middle of the night to apparently due to an explosion of liquid petroleum gas, I wrote to Philip Ruddock via Tony Windsor. Mr. Wharton makes reference to several explosions he alleged occurred in schools in New South Wales and Victoria. As criminal matters, these are issues for the state police to investigate. For an act to be considered as a terrorist act, it must be an action or a threat of action that causes serious physical harm or death to a person or endangers a person's life or involves serious risk to public health or safety, serious damage to property or serious interference with essential electronic systems. The action or threat of action must be intended to advance a political, ideological or religious cause and to coerce or influence by intimidation an Australian or foreign government or intimidate any section of the public of any country. Mr Wharton also referred to a plan to ban any artwork, book, literature or film which advocates or praises the use of terrorism. It is not correct to say the government bans books or other entertainment media. Terrorism is a serious issue. The Australian government considered something had to be done to limit the circulation of material which advocates the doing of terrorist acts. There I was, bomb maker to a terrorist gang that was good fun and interesting work. In September 2007, the Parliament enacted legislation I introduced which amended the Classification Act so that material that advocates the doing of a terrorist act is refused classification. Material that has been refused classification cannot be legally sold or displayed in Australia. 12 November. I have again written to Mr Ruddock asking for his consideration of your specific question as to whether it is legal to display and sell the books attached to your letter under the government's anti-terrorism laws and for his advices. 18th of January 2008. The Honourable Bob Debus to Tony Windsor. I understand Mr. Wharton has asked whether it is legal to display and sell the following books under Commonwealth anti-terrorism laws. Jaeger by General Chuck Jaeger and Leo Janos. Still Life with Woodpecker by Tom Robbins. And The Death Freak by Clifford Irving and Herbert Burkholz. Section 9A of the Classification Act states that publications, films or computer games that advocate the doing of a terrorist act must be classified as refused classification. Refused classification material cannot be legally imported, sold or advertised in Australia.
For material to be captured by Section 9A, it must advocate the doing of a terrorist act, as the terms are defined. Material only advocates the doing of a terrorist act if it directly or indirectly counsels, urges, or provides instruction on the doing of a terrorist act, or if it directly praises the doing of a terrorist act in specific ter circumstances. A terrorist act includes an action or threat of action which causes serious physical harm or death to a person or endangers a person's life or involves serious risk to public health or safety or serious damage to property or serious interference with essential electronic systems. Such action or threat of action must be intended to advance a political, ideological or religious cause and to coerce or influence by intimidation an Australian or foreign government or intimidate the public or a section of the public. I understand that the three books mentioned above have not been classified. If the books were submitted for classification, it would be for the classification board to decide whether any of them advocate the doing of a terrorist act within the meaning of section 9A. So we're three responses into a question and answer session. And I've been asking about these books and the official answer so far is, oh, nobody's asked to classify these books, therefore they haven't been classified, therefore they haven't been refused classification, therefore nobody's made a decision about Brigadier General Chuck Yeager, who said he was bomb maker to a terrorist gang and it was good fun and interesting work. Okay, so here we have 14 February 2008. Thank you for your letters of uh, February 2008, further to previous correspondence and for additional comments regarding the federal government's position in relation to the former government's anti-terrorism legislation and related issues. 19th of March 2008, telling Tony Windsor, as Mr Wharton states, the classification board must classify material that advocates terrorism as refused classification according to section 9A of the Classification Publications Film and Computers Act, Computer Games Act 1995. The Act states that to advocate a terrorist act, the publication, film or computer game must directly or indirectly counsel or urge the doing of a terrorist act, or directly or indirectly provide instruction in the doing of a terrorist act, or directly praise the doing of a terrorist act in circumstances where there is a risk that such praise might have the effect of leading a person, regardless of his or her age or any mental impairment within the meaning of section 7.3 of the criminal code, that the person might suffer, close bracket, to engage in a terrorist act. A publication, film or computer game, does not advocate the doing of a terrorist act if it depicts or describes a terrorist act, but the description or depiction could reasonably be considered to be done merely as part of public discussion or debate or as entertainment or satire. There I was, bomb maker to a terrorist gang. It was good fun and interesting work. Was that satirical, was it, Chuck? public discussion, debate, entertainment. So the official story, the bottom line, it appears to be that if Chuck Yeager is not a banned terrorist author in Australia, the only reason would be because the Australian authorities have decided that it would be bad manners to submit his book for classification. Because according to the letter of the law, he says that it's good fun and interesting work to be a bomb maker to a terrorist gang and that is advocating the commission of a terrorist offence. So therefore, his book should be taken off the shelves in Australia, and I don't think I'd like to advise him to come here anytime soon. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Who would have thought it? Chuck Yeager, banned terrorist author in Australia for advocating terrorism. Ciao.